and welcome to the RATP Innovation Series. My name is Dan Sobovitz and I'm very lucky because in each episode of this series I get to speak with global disruptors in urban mobility. Each time we have 10 minutes to get the gist of a big topic. Today we'll talk with those who are reinventing air mobility, unlocking the potential of the urban sky. You can watch all our episodes of the RATP YouTube channel or listen to us as a podcast on SoundCloud. Simply look for RATP Innovation Series Playlist. As you can see, our studio is very real while our speakers are joining us virtually. And I'd like to welcome to our studio Pierre Becard, a head of urban mobility at the RATP Group, Alban Negret, urban air mobility project manager at Group ADP or Paris Airports, and Romain Erny, mobility and urban logistics experts at the Choose Paris Region Agency. So let me start with you, Pierre. If not mistaken, the RATP has made use of various means of transportation around the world, but they were always on the ground and never in the sky. Now you are attempting to reinvent urban aviation, bringing together technologies like electromobility, autonomous driving, AI, 5G, and advanced aeronautics. So how do you go about tackling such a huge challenge? Hi, you're right. We are for it excited about this challenge, uh, but we remain uh, very pragmatic and, and professional. In fact, we, we consider that while the technology is progressing very quickly uh, with certifications expected by 2025, its integration into everyday life remains to be built. It's really the reason why we launched a call for expression of interest last September in partnership with Geosparis Region and, and Group ADP to develop an urban air mobility industry branch in the Paris region. The ambition is uh, was to find the right partners to help us structure and accelerate the maturity of the local ecosystem to facilitate the development of urban air mobility. The current context that you know uh, of environmental in transition in air transport and economic recovery, in addition to the prospects of the 2024 Olympic Games, is an exceptional uh, opportunity to showcase the sector capabilities and to make the Paris region uh, a real reference in, in the global market for urban air mobility. Uh, the call was structured around five categories uh, to meet the challenge posed by, by this new form of mobility, vehicle development, urban infrastructure, airspace integration, operations, and, and public acceptance. Uh, we believe that all these topics are equally important for success. Uh, the, uh, this, this initiative um, already brought together 115 applications from 25 countries. It's really, uh, really a, a big success that shows there is strong support uh, for the structuring and, and often air mobility industry in the Paris region. 13, uh, 30 Winners were selected, including some uh, some leading industry players like Airbus, as well as international startups and major academic and institution or research institutions, uh, including the University of Berkeley and, and the, the French Civil Aviation School. Our objective is to make UAM uh, a reality in the Paris region. Uh, starting with a showcase during the, the Paris uh, 2024 Olympics and, and first commercial service by 2030. Uh, by, by the aim for, for, for our ATP group, this new mobility uh, actively complements our, our, um, our traditional transport modes. And by 2030, we, we will be achieved the, the Grand Paris Express, automated metro, um, and and URM will have to, to be connected to this new train station. It's really a great deal for, for us. 
So thank you, Pierre. And you mentioned the Paris Olympics, which are coming up. But Romain, other than the Paris Olympics, what makes the Paris region the right region to go through such an experiment? What conditions can you offer? And what are you, how are you appealing those uh, startups and, and uh, entrepreneurs to come and deploy their technologies in the Paris region? Um, at Choose Paris region, we support international companies that want to set up or expand activities in the Paris region. And for a year now, we have been approached by many players in urban air mobility um, that wanted to explore the potential of the Paris region. And this is one of the reasons we decided to team up with RATP and ADP on this initiative and experimentation. Uh, to be sure, the Paris region has a dense urban population with 12 million inhabitants and an average of 40 million daily trips. Uh, we consider that it's an uh, ideal platform to test new modes of transportation to complement the existing one, whether for the goods or passengers. And this was just confirmed by a, a very recent EASA study that ranked Paris first city in terms of best suitability for urban air mobility. And to answer your second question, I think Paris region has many assets to offer to pleasure developing new mobility solution uh, a diverse and dynamic R&D ecosystem, a vibrant startup scene offering technological bricks, and most important, in my opinion, a talented and accessible pool of engineers. And on top of that, in France and in the Paris region, we have a very attractive R&D incentive to support companies. But we're also talking to other regions and cities around the world to exchange best practice and to share our developments. There is Obviously, competition between territories to attract private investment, but in my opinion, partnership between cities and regions on emerging technologies is very important and definitely a key factor of success. So I hear it's the right time and it's the right place. And moving to you, Alma, we heard about some of the proposals you received already from Pierre earlier, but maybe you can tell us about some of the concrete solutions that were selected by your group so far. In the five categories that Pierre mentioned, uh, we have on, on, on the one end, we have the manufacturers uh, like uh, Volocopter, Airbus, um, that uh, will be able to, to confront that vehicle with the expectation of, of future passengers uh, in our concrete uh, sandbox environment on Pontoise Airfield. And the idea would be to evaluate their environmental impact uh, whether on, on noise or, 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 or vibration uh, to, to the expectation of the, of the public. Uh, we have also research institutions that will be able to conduct some, some modeling and field surveys uh, to help understand better the public acceptance uh, of, of this new aerial uh, mobility. Uh, the second part of the test will be around the ground uh, infrastructure. And the, the platform on Pontoise will, uh, will allow to test uh, all the interfaces between the infrastructure and the vehicle uh, themselves. Uh, so it includes maintenance, recharge, um, um, but, uh, but also passenger operation, passenger processings, as it is today in, 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 in the airport world. Uh, so we can expect some biometric technologies to be, to be showcased um, to, to ensure the security and, and the safety of the, of the uh, operation. And finally, uh, we'll have, of course, some flight tests uh, in, uh, in, in partnership with the French Civil Aviation and the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, EASA, uh, to validate the performances of the vehicle uh, in, in this completely safe uh, environment because it's a, it's a real airfield. airfield. Um, we are building the first Vertiport right now. I was on site yesterday. And uh, we can bring also some uh, meteorological uh, weather forecasting uh, solution uh, like the one offered by Leosphere uh, to, to predict more accurately um, uh, the, 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 the local condition for, for this flight and to be able to precisely um, monitor uh, the, the, the performance of, of, the, of the vehicle and the integration into the existing traffic, what we call unmanned traffic management, uh, thanks also to uh, a CESAR uh, uh, joint undertaking consortium that we are part of. 
This episode was quite a challenge covering such a vast topic of urban mobility in so little time, only 10 minutes, but I learned a lot and I'm sure that our viewers did as well. Let me once again thank our three speakers, Pierre, Albin and Romain, and let me also thank you, our viewers, for being with us. I remind you, you can watch the entire our ATP innovation series on YouTube or listen to it as a podcast on SoundCloud. We do cover other topics like smart curbs, robotics, uh, at work, rail tech, women in AI, and much, much more. So we'll see you at the next episode of the RATP innovation series. Mm -hmm.